Hey everyone, welcome to part one. With it being May 4th today, I thought I'd do something to celebrate. And what better to do than create a lightsaber for VR? This project originally took around 13 hours to complete. And so I don't bore you, what I've done is split it up into five videos, which I'll be releasing a video each day this week. With that being said, may the 4th be with you. I'm Jonathan, this is Game Dev XR. Let's jump right in. So the first thing I had to do was collect reference material. To do this, I used pure ref so I could organize my reference images and then went to Google. The idea here was to just find as many lightsaber images as I could, which had interesting features and I could use in my own designs later on. When it comes to lightsabers, the length changes quite a bit, but I knew I wanted it to feel comfortable in VR, especially with the scale of them. So I actually brought the VR hands, which come with Unreal's demo project into Blender. That way I could duplicate it, rotate it, and create a rough idea of the size that it should be. This allowed me to actually place a cylinder into the scene and make it look like it would be the correct size once it's in an Unreal project. This technique actually worked really well as I didn't have to rescale it at all once it was over there. Started the project with the idea of creating a high poly model and maybe baking it down to a low poly mesh. But with this eventually becoming a hero prop, I actually decided to just go with the reduced topology and eventually remove the edge loops that I've added here as they weren't necessary and the, the detail that they added was kind of pointless to the final build, especially with the sharp edges and it naturally looking sharp in certain areas, as well as using smoothing groups to smooth areas out. Here I wanted to try something different and add some kind of air vents to the model. I started to create some meshes for the shape of the vents and then use Blender's Boolean modifier, which I haven't used before in Blender up until now, but I was quite surprised by how easy it was to use. The end result worked pretty well, but I realized that I didn't actually like the result that I got from it just on part of the design, so I ended up removing them. It wasn't a waste of time though, as I did end up using what I'd learned later on in the build to use the Boolean modifier again for some more details later. Here I used the loop cut tool to make some rings around the mesh, which I then inset. This worked well to break up the silhouette and add that little bit of detail needed to start making it look like a lightsaber. Here I did have some issues with face normals, and to be honest, I still haven't figured out what was going wrong with them. So if you know, leave a comment in the description, I'd love to know how to fix it. But switching the shade of views within Blender actually seemed to fix this, or at least make it look like they weren't there. <laughs> I'm not sure if these have a name, but I really like the black bars found at Anakin's Saber. So I thought I'd try them out on my design as well. There was, they were quite simple to create. I started with a cube, which I scaled, inset and extruded just to get the main shape. I didn't do anything too complicated with it. Then I used Blender's array modifier with an empty object to duplicate the mesh around the body. This just meant I didn't have to manually move it and position it each time. And it also allowed me more control over it when I started doing UVs later on. At this stage in the build, I started to add some materials to the model. This was so I could see the overall shape better and get an idea of how the end result might look. This was extremely helpful as it let me see the end result 
and get an understanding of how all the how all the individual parts would eventually work together. I found a reference image to a custom lightsaber. I believe it's called the Fallen. And I like the guard they had designed on the top of it. So I used this as inspiration in my own design. So using another cylinder, I blocked it in place. And this is what you can see me doing here. I was a bit concerned about the scale of the saber at this point. So I added the blade in to get a better understanding of it. I also just wanted to see what it would look like. <laughs> I was getting a bit impatient, I think. Again, I did this by scaling a cylinder and adding a missing material to it. From there, I just moved back down to the base of the model. At the base of the saber, I started to add some more details to it. I started by adding some more rings as this was starting to become a main feature throughout the design. I then tried to break it up some more with a boolean modifier by creating some insets. Again, this modifier works great, but the results were too harsh and seemed to ruin the minimalistic design I had so far for it. So I ended up removing these. It basically made the lightsaber look more like a sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who. This is the point in the build where I started adding small, some smaller details to the mesh. I did this by adding a dial to the side and then adding screws around the saber itself. I wanted the design to look like it was made of multiple machined parts. So adding screws helped get this across in the final design. I also just got my hands on a 3D printer, so I'm actually thinking of printing this design. If you guys would like to see that or be interested in it, let me know in the comment section down below. This is the point in the build where I feel like the sabers started to come together. So far the guard looked pretty simple in design and I really wanted to add some details to it which could break it up and up slightly and make it look more unique. To do this, I used the bull modifier again and started to play around with different shapes till I found one I liked. I also added some more shapes into the modifier so I could control different aspects in different places. With the guard having a design I liked, I wanted to make it look like it was held in place, so I duplicated a screw and positioned it around the mesh. I was really pleased with how the guard turned out, but not the area beneath it. While trying to think of what I could do here, I moved down to the main body as I felt the area was too empty. Since I was going for a machine design and wanted it to look as though the saber could be taken apart into different pieces, 
I thought of ways I could do this and one of these was to make it look like it was locked in place. To get this effect I used the boom modifier again to cut out parts of the mesh. I feel like this resulted in a nicer design and more logical if you were to look at it. I had more screws here but looking back it might have looked slightly better if I used a gold pin which would go through the model. I then moved back to the top of the model to work on refining the details there. This took a lot of trial and error but it was worth it in the end. Being able to see the blade briefly through the saber worked well to break up the silhouette while not adding anything to the exterior. idea of creating a small inset but didn't want it to look too uniform so I added some cylinders around it kind of like supports to break it up. This would also create some nice areas for ambient occlusion and dirt to be added when texturing. At this point I was extremely pleased with the result and so I didn't ruin it by adding too much, I stopped working on it here. I'm really pleased I did as the result once in Unreal was so much better than I expected it to be. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, if you want to see more like it don't forget to subscribe, that way you won't miss any future videos. You can also like this video and don't be afraid to leave a comment down below if you have a prop or model you'd like to see me recreate in 3D or VR. If you enjoyed this content and would like to support the channel, I've started a Patreon. I'd like to keep working on this project and even turn it into a full VR game, but unfortunately I can't do that without help from you guys. If you'd like to know more about what I want to do with the channel and how you could help, I'll leave a link in the description to the Patreon page, which has all the details over there. In part 2 I'll be going over how I cleaned up the topology and unwrapped the model to make it ready for texturing and substance painter. But until then, stay safe, may the force be with you, bye.